We are filling our toolbox to go out into the world and play. We must prepare ourselves for the shock of such experiences as reading the paper or seeing the news if we're truly to be emotional warriors ready to create and hold a vibratory charge in the pursuit of happiness on our planet. Bruce Lipton and Steve Behrman explain the challenge and offer a solution from our class text, Spontaneous Evolution. Pursuit of happiness? Looks like it got away. The Happy Planet Index is a study that measures not only happiness, but the cost of obtaining that happiness in terms of ecological impact and overall quality of life. The calculation is simple. Life satisfaction times life expectancy plus ecological footprint equals happiness index. Put another way, the Happy Planet Index measures how efficiently a country converts the resources of our planet into the happiness and well-being of its citizens. The United States comes in at 150th out of 178 nations, trailing such countries as Ethiopia, Nigeria, and Pakistan, just to name a few. Why does the United States have such a low rank? Well, call us Bigfoot. Our ecological footprint is among the biggest in the world. In order to achieve the life satisfaction and life expectancy of a person in Costa Rica, which came in number three in the index, the average American uses four and a half times more resources. Now that's inefficiency. And yet, our financial system continues to spin its yarn, selling the unrealistic hope that doing more of the same, shop till you drop, will yield different results. The marketing strategy of creating artificial needs to which you need to attach in order to be happy in today's world seems to be going strong. How could you really stay connected and participate with others without your cell phone? a device which didn't exist a short time ago. Now here's one of a number of alternatives the authors of Spontaneous Evolution recommend. Alternative number four, move from separation to connection. The Buddhists describe loving participation in the world as compassion, a word that's often misunderstood by Western minds. We tend to think of compassion as a nice sentiment taking the time to feel bad about people who are starving somewhere. But in the Buddhist tradition, compassion is a far more sophisticated concept in that it shows a deep understanding of both quantum physics and cellular biology. In her book, A Call to Compassion, Ara Glasser refers to compassion as the practice of enlightenment. In other words, enlightenment is something we cultivate in a daily life based on sane understanding of the world and our relationship to it. The Bodhisattva, one dedicated to awakening heart and mind, Glasser said, cultivates the two-pronged mind, the understanding that love of self and love of others are one and the same. Compassion, she wrote, is an expression of human freedom flowing from a sound intuition of the unity of life in all living things. Compassion is what connects all things. It is both a force in the universe as well as a human experience. In other words, compassion is both the field and the intention we put into that field. A worthy challenge we could undertake in our life till next class is how we can more compassionately direct our emotional body to experience our connection to others. How we can be an example of dynamic, impassioned peace on our planet. A very different model than the stoic, non-emotional image of peace that's often portrayed. What's your personal happiness index? Here are some tips from the keys of Yashua. Happiness is a choice. It's been proven through the ages that those who truly choose happiness can deal productively and creatively with just about anything in life, good or bad. 
Choose to create the life you really want. Assume responsibility for your actions, thoughts, and feelings. Refuse to blame others for your unhappiness. Blame is just a way to avoid responsibility. Happy people don't see themselves as victims, regardless of their circumstances. They focus on finding solutions to their problems and ways to make their lives better. Choose to look deeply into yourself continuously. Assess what makes you uniquely happy rather than accepting what others say should make you happy. It's an act of supreme kindness to yourself to look into your soul, identify your needs, aspirations, and passions, and decide, is this really what I want? Make creating of happiness important. Adjust your priorities to match your dreams. Do something every day that makes you happy. Don't automatically expect this from others. The only thing you should assume in life is responsibility for making your own life work. The surest way to enter the Sacred Heart is to give thanks earnestly for prayers that have already been answered. You have many. Take stock. If you must, revise your expectations of life in order to see them, then do it. This same process will expose your true desires, for God only answers the prayers of your true desires. Examine the nature of your answered prayers. This will allow you to better understand the nature of prayer. So take handout one and fill in section 3A. A choice I make in my life for my unique happiness this month is. Then 3B, an adjustment in my life I'm willing to make to support my choice is. And finally, 3C, a true heart's desire I'm grateful for having already fulfilled is. Notice any effect of that expressing gratitude about you already have has on your choice for happiness for this month. Daily gratitude, I believe, is grease for the happiness slide. 